Praise the Lord, my sisters and brothers. I'm your sister in Christ, Michelle Rice. And this is a prayer connection where you make a connection with God. Yes, this is now the prayer connection where you make a connection with heaven. Now, this show is designed to build you up, to strengthen you, and to encourage you to go into another level in your prayer life. Yes. It's designed by God to catapult you and to launch you forward into another level in your prayer life. And we know that it's all done by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. He's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father God, we bless you today, Lord. We praise your holy name. Father God, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be thanked, God. You are worthy to be worshipped, God. You are worthy, hallelujah. You are worthy to be magnified. You are worthy to be glorified. Oh, hallelujah. You are worthy to be lifted up. You are worthy to be honored. You are worthy to be worshipped. We serve the true and living God. And his name is Jesus Christ. And he's coming today to tell us that he is in control. Your God is in control in the name of Jesus. We worship the God that's in the control. We worship the God that's omnipresent. Hallelujah. Omnipresent at all places, at all times. We worship the God that's omniscient. All-knowing. Yes, he knows all. In the name of Jesus, we serve the omnipotent God. The God that's all-powerful, and his name is Jesus Christ. So no matter what you're going through today, no matter what the world is in going through today, no matter what your community is going through today, your family, your marriage, no matter what you're going through today, God says, I am in control. God says, cast your cares upon him, for he cares for you. In Jesus' mighty name. He cares for you. He said he'll never leave you nor forsake you, but he'll be with you always in the mighty name of Jesus. God says, take your burden to the Lord and lead them there. Take your burden to the Lord and lead them there. Yes, cast your cares upon him for he careth for you. He cares for your family. He's cared for your children. He cares for you. He cares about you. In Jesus' mighty name. And he loved you very much today. He loves you with an everlasting love. Oh, yes. If you hadn't been the only one on the earth, he still would. Jesus Christ would have still died just for you. He would, would, he would have went to the cross just for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we serve the true and living God. The God of all love. The God of kindness and gentleness and mercy. Oh, the God of peace. Oh, that's the God we serve. The Prince of Peace. Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace in the name of Jesus. Jehovah Jireh, the God that supplies all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He says, just come to me in the name of Jesus. Come. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. He said, I will give you rest. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light and you will find rest unto your soul. So come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and grace and help in your time of need. Do it today. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, stick around, stick around, stick around. Because at the end of this broadcast, after you hear the word of the Lord, I want to lead you in a simple prayer that will take you out of the kingdom of darkness and launch you over into the kingdom of our dear son, the kingdom of light in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. God wants you to know something today, to be encouraged. When you look around you today, if you really look around you, you see that see the signs of the time is all prevalent. You see the signs of the time. In Matthew 24, Jesus prophesied this day. He says in this day, in the day that he that he was close to return, for when Jesus was soon to return, he let us know that we will hear wars and rumors of wars. We see it now. Russia, Ukraine. Wars and rumors of wars. Matthew 24, 6 says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. See that ye be not troubled. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. 
but the end is not yet. He let us know when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, don't be afraid. He has not given you the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. He says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not afraid, for I am your God. I'll be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Don't be afraid when you hear of wars and rumors of wars. He said, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. It's just a sign of the time. Jesus prophesied that in the last days, when he was soon, when he was about to return, that you would hear continually, continually wars and rumors of wars, more and more consistently and more of intensity. And we see it now. The, when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, it's not for you to be frightened or be afraid. It's God talking to you saying, I'm about to become, I'm about to return any moment, any second, any day. That is what the wars and rumors of wars are saying to us. That Jesus Christ is about to return any moment, any second, any day. Any day, any second, any moment. Jesus is soon to return. And then with the wars and rumors of wars, it's the same thing as nation will rise against nation. and kingdom against kingdom. We see it here with Ukraine and Russia. And before Jesus comes back, the closer and closer he comes back, you're going to hear more, more wars and rumors of wars. It's not to be afraid. It's not to be frightened. It's just a sign of the time speaking to us, saying, Jesus Christ is about to return any moment, any second, any day. In Jesus' mighty name. And then with the plagues, the pestilences, we call it a pandemic. We call corona, the corona night coronavirus and the COVID-19, the Delta variant and the Omicron, all of these, 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 these plagues, these pestilence, what we call the pandemic in 2022, but the Bible calls it plagues and, pan, plagues and pestilence. But when you see these things and we've been experiencing these things for the past few years, it's not for you to be afraid. It's not for you to be frightened. It just, the pestilence is speaking. The plague is speaking to us. The pandemic is speaking to us. It's, it's saying, look at the signs of the time. Jesus is about to return any moment, any second, any day. Get your house in order in the mighty name of Jesus. Don't be afraid. He is not giving you a spirit of fear. But spirit of power, love, and sound mind. Jesus already predicted it. He already prophesied it in, in, the, in the Gospels. That before he returned, you will see pestilence. Let's read it. Um, Matthew 24, 27 says, for nation should rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, you and there should be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. All these things are the beginning of sorrow. The pestilence is this beginning of sorrows and is speaking to us. The pestilence has a voice. The plague has a voice. The pandemic is speaking. It's saying Jesus Christ is soon to return any moment, any second, any day. We got to get our houses in order in the mighty name of Jesus. And you people, they're watching news all day long and they are so fearful. Bible already told us about that. If you read in Luke 21, 6, it says men's heart will fail them, fail them for fear and looking for after those things which are coming upon the earth. Luke 21 6 says, Men's heart failing them, failing them for fear, and looking after those things which are coming on the earth. I see some people, even some of the saints, are in this in fear right now. God's like giving you a spirit of fear, a spirit of power, love, and sound man. But it's not to be afraid because the Bible says in Luke 21, 28, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up for your redemption draws now. In Jesus' mighty name. Look up. And when you begin to see all these things come to pass, Jesus said, look up. Look up. For your redemption is drawing nigh. Jesus is talking. He's saying, I'm coming back, saints. I'm coming back, world. Any moment, any second, any day. Get your house in order. In Jesus' name. 
And when you see all these natural calamities happen, unprecedented tornadoes, unprecedented earthquakes, wildfires, volcano eruptions. Jesus already talked about it. He spoke of the earthquakes, which just was an example of all the natural calamities that would hit the earth. He says in Luke 21, 11, he says, And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines, and pestilence, and fearful signs shall there be from heaven. He says, he says, And great earthquakes shall be in many places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful signs shall there be from heaven. He spoke of the earthquakes. Did you know that in the state of Ohio, I think it was, they said it was, we had, we had several earthquakes. Now, it wasn't major, but they found it, they detected it at the shoreline of Lake Erie. When those, when those little earthquakes was quaking, under the shoreline of Lake Erie, it was talking to us. It had a voice. It says, it's part of the signs of the time. Jesus, Jesus was talking through the earthquake. Those earthquakes we got in Ohio, that we never get like that. It, we had almost nine of them. They detected under, under the shoreline of Lake Erie. Those earthquakes that, that we experienced and all over the world, was Jesus saying, I'm coming back any moment, any second, any day. Hallelujah. We have to look up because our redemption is drawing now. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Not only did we see earthquakes, which was just an example of natural calamities, we got the tornadoes that hit, I believe, Tennessee, Kentucky, Arkansas, Missouri, and Illinois. Those were major tornadoes. A natural calamities like an earthquake it's a sign of the time and when we get those wildfires California, Nevada, Oregon Florida, Oklahoma, Texas, Idaho Colorado to name a few those, those wildfires that just wouldn't stop burning that's a natural calamity like an earthquake all of this is, is all, of, um, all of those are under the umbrella of natural calamities and Jesus already prophesied that these will happen in diverse places the Bible already said it. Jesus, Jesus already told us. In the name of Jesus. God, we give you praise. God, we give you glory, Lord. Oh, Father God, as we look around us, oh God, we thank you, Lord God, that you have not given unto us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. In the name of Jesus, you said in the last days, God, before you come back, Lord Jesus, that we will hear of wars and rumors of wars. You said, see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet yet. You said, don't be fearful. Don't fret yourself. Don't be afraid. God says, I've not given you the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. But when you see all these things, oh, you told us to look up, look up, look up. Because our redemption is drawing nigh Jesus. He says, I'm on my way back. Oh, I'm going to come back for a church without spot or wrinkle. He said, don't let your heart fail you from fear about the things that coming upon the face of the earth. Jesus has already told you these things will come to pass but the end is not yet. It's just telling you that I'm on my way back and get your houses in order in the mighty name of Jesus. When we see earthquakes and tornadoes and all these wildfires and these volcanic eruptions erupting all around us. It's just part of the natural calamities that Jesus spoke of when he spoke about great earthquakes. It's just a sign of the time. Oh, you said when we see these things, not for us to be worried and not for us to fret and not us for us to be fearful, not for us to be afraid, but it's just telling us it's speaking to us. It's just prophesying to us that Jesus Christ is soon to return. We got to get our houses in order in the mighty name of Jesus. The mighty name of Jesus. Jesus said, watch out in Luke 21, 34. In the New Living Translation. He says watch out. 
Don't let your hearts be dulled by carousing, drunkenness, and the worries of this life. Don't let that day catch you unawares. He says, don't let the worries of this life catch, catch you unawares. Don't let the, let the worries of this life, don't let that day catch you unawares. Don't let that day catch you unaware. Don't let the time when Jesus come by catch you unaware by you fretting and worrying in life. The enemy brings worries and trials upon us and all kinds of calamity to get our focus off. We, we be so worried about finances and worried about this and worried about that that we're not focused on the point that the signs of the time all around us is telling us that, that Jesus Christ is soon to return. We can't let the worries of this life blind us, put a smoke screen up to us. We can't be able to keep casting those cares upon the Lord. He cares for you. And let the main thing be the main thing. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added. In the mighty name of Jesus. We can't let Jesus Christ come back. And we're not watching. Watching and waiting and being prayerful. In the mighty name of Jesus. And you know what two saints? The signs of the time. They're speaking to us. And we see it all around us. That Jesus Christ is coming back any moment. Any second, any day. How should our conduct be? Our behavior should be a certain way because Jesus could come back. Come back in the rapture or come back for me right this moment. He come, I can lead this earth. I can lead the earth. And we all, all men are appointed unto, un, all men are appointed once to die and after that the judgment. We all are appointed to die in this natural body. So even if Jesus don't come back in the rapture, we might lead the earth in our own personal life. My day will come to an end. It might come, it might come to an end before the rapture. I have to have my house in order. Even if Jesus comes back for me before the rapture, I have to have my house in order. Jesus could come back for me before the rapture. I have to have my house in order. I should be living the life that any moment, any day he could come back. I need to be ready when he comes. My behavior should be purified. Because he's coming to back for a church without spot or wrinkle. The Bible says in John 3 and 3. 1 John 3 and 3. He said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Beloved. Now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Say that one more time. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And. Every man or woman, every man that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. So what it's really telling us, it's saying that when he comes back for us, we don't know how we're going to look specifically, but however he looks, we're going to be just like him. We're going we're gonna to be his reflection. And then it says that every man that is waiting on Jesus' return, Looking for Jesus, looking up, knowing that he did their redemption draws now. Looking up, knowing that he could come at any moment, any second, any day. Those of us that expect his coming, the Bible says this hope that we have that he is about to return soon, it should purify us. It says it should it should purify us, even as he is pure. It keeps me pure. Because I know he could come at any moment, any second, any day. And I know this Bible tells us, and the sounds of the time is telling us. So I have to be on my P's and Q's, so to speak, any moment, any day. It purifies my life. It keeps me repenting. It keeps me treating people right. And when I do somebody wrong, I got to repent. I got to turn from my wicked ways. In Jesus' name. 
It's keeping me pure. The hope that Jesus Christ is soon to return. The knowledge of the fact that he can come back any moment, any second, any day. It keeps me pure. The Bible says it purifies us. It keeps us pure. All those who have this eager expectation will keep themselves pure even as he is pure. According to the New Living Translation of 1 John 3 and 3. It calls a purification. Father God, it keeps me purified, keeps me clean, because I'm going to keep repenting. I'm going to stay clean and walk right in Jesus' name. And if I should fall, I ask God to forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me from all the washing it, walk and unrighteous. Purge me, Jesus. Wash me, Jesus. Cleanse me, God. In the name of Jesus, purify my heart, God. It's keeping me pure because I want to be ready when he comes. Because he's only coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. In Jesus' name. Oh, God, we give you praise. We give you glory, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, oh, God, I love you today. We love you, Jesus. And I pray for those that are watching, God. Oh, God, that we'll be. Oh, God, those that's looking for his coming, that's looking back for his return. And we are walking the ways of the Lord. You said, if my people who are called by my name, if they humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, you said, I will hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sin and I will heal the land. And then you said, your eyes will be open and your ears attend to the prayer that is made into this place. Father God, because we know that you are soon to return. It purifies our conduct. It purifies our behavior. It causes us to love our neighbor as ourself. It causes us it causes us to be walking the fruit of the spirit. It causes us to walk in love. It causes us to walk in joy and peace with peace with our brethren. In the name of Jesus, it keeps us being givers and, and doing good and walk around doing good and healing all that was a that are oppressed of the devil. It keeps us pure. It keeps us doing our ministry. It keeps us in our prayer closet. You said we should pray without ceasing. You said men should always pray and not faint because you are soon to return, Lord Jesus. It purifies us. The knowledge that you're about to return, Father God. It purifies us, O oh God. It keeps us on our knees. It keeps us repenting. It keeps us. He says, in the last days, don't forsake yourself to assembly together with others, other believers. In other words, you should be around other believers in a congregate setting, in a church setting. He said, don't forsake the assembly even more so when you see the day approaching. What day approaching? Jesus Christ returned. He says, don't forsake the assembly together of yourself. Congre congregate with the congregation of the Lord, with the body of Christ, even even more so when we see that day approaching. Because he is coming back, saints. Any moment, any day, any second. Any moment, any day, any second. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to pray a prayer. Because I know many of you might not even know Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. Jesus died for you personally. He's your personal Savior. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But, but even, even if the whole world was all for saving you, and, and there was only one left for you, he would have died just for you. He'll leave the 99 and go after the one. He loves you just that much. He died on a cross for you. He rose from the dead from you. And if he got up, you can get up. We're not going to be on this earth, the earth forever. It's going to come a day when Jesus will come back for his bride. Come back for his, come back for his bride. And we'll be called up to meet him in the air. Don't you want to be ready when he comes? Don't you want to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Come on, let me lead you in a simple prayer. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I come to you. Your word says, come on, repeat it. Your word says, if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart, that God raised it from the dead, I will be saved. With my heart, I believe it. And with my mouth, I just confess it in Jesus' name. Now, if you pray that simple prayer, 
Pray this simple prayer. He said, call upon the name of the Lord. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you called upon the name of the Lord today, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, today you are saved. You are saved. And when Jesus comes back any moment, any second, any day, you will be ready when he comes. Because he, you, because, because you, you are saved today. Saved, saved, saved. You have salvation. You've been washed with the blood of the Lamb. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. You're new, a new creature today. Now, what you need to do as a new creature, ask God. To lead you to a good church home. A church that you can grow and learn with other believers. You can hear the word of God with other believers. And be a, a community with the body of Christ. Do that. Pray that prayer. Yes, and always pray. So you ask God to lead you to a good church. You should be praying it every day. I'm giving you instructions of what to do as a born, new born again believer. Pray every day. Talk to Jesus. Like you talk to your best friend. Because he is a friend that's sick closer than a brother. Pray and talk to him in Jesus' name. And then get you a good translation of the Bible. The word of God. Man don't live by bread alone. By every word that proceeds out the mouth of God. Get a good Bible and study that Bible. The Bible, the word of God says study to show yourselves approved. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. So you reading your word, talking to God in prayer, going to church, then implement the word of God. Don't be just a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. Yes, and the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Yes. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will keep your heart and mind to Jesus Christ. Yes. You have a you have a God. You have God's on your side. He will work all things together for your good because you love him now. And you call it according to his purpose. And whatever the enemy meant for your good, God going meant for your evil, God was keep turning around for your good. And many might be your afflictions, but God will deliver you out of them all. Because you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You're not in the kingdom of darkness, but you're in the kingdom of light. You never, you're not controlled by the devil no more. But you're a child of the Most High God, being, being led of the Spirit. God is good. And he's good to me. And you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Well, saints. Thank you for joining me on another day of the Prayer Connection. Yes, and I'm your sister in Christ, Michelle Rice. You have just watched the Prayer Connection, where we make a connection with God. You have just watched the Prayer Connection, where we make a connection with heaven. I'll see you next time. And always remember, God loves you, and I love you too. Now you be blessed. Bye-bye.